As Formula 1 prepares itself for the bright lights and controversy of the Las Vegas Strip, its most famous American has placed a massive bet. I'm not talking about Logan Sargent losing his career earnings at the roulette table or Gunther Steiner not calling Gene for once. No, I'm talking about Michael Andretti and General Motors Cadillac taking a huge gamble on their entry to the Formula 1 grid. When you're in Vegas, you have to take a bit of a gamble, don't you? Plenty of the drivers have been indulging as well. Lando Norris, for example, was spotted at a shopping center in downtown Vegas on Monday and decided to put his racing talents to the test against other drivers at a racing simulator, with an entry fee of $65 and a prize of $200 on offer for the winner. Then again, it isn't that much of a gamble for an F1 driver to take on the public in a simulator. Norris joked that he managed to earn his brother Oliver some extra cash after racing under his name. There's a simulator in the mall. It's a ripoff. You pay $65, and if you win, you get $200, Norris said, speaking at a press event on Tuesday. So my brother's nearly $140 richer because I did it under his name. I was 45 seconds quicker than P2, so it was close. The gamble Andretti and Cadillac have made is slightly higher stakes than that, though. Back in early October, the American outfit Andretti Autosport were given the green light to enter Formula 1 as a new 11th team by the FIA. In January earlier on in the year, the FIA, the sport's governing body, launched an application process for new teams to seek to join Formula 1 in 2025, 2026 when new engine regulations take effect or 2027. While Andretti was accepted through that process, getting entry to Formula 1 isn't that simple. While there is a governing body in the FIA, there is also a commercial side of the sport which is controlled by Liberty Media. They also get called Formula 1 Management or FOM as well as just F1 at times. Formula 1, after all, is a business, as are the vast majority of professional sporting leagues around the world, from the NFL to the Premier League to the IPL. Way back before the FIA opened the application process to join the F1 grid, Andretti was trying to find a way into the sport. He investigated buying a couple of teams, and when that failed, he basically took to the media, demanding a space on the grid. That angle of attack was not appreciated by the current Formula 1 teams. Michael Andretti and his father Mario basically told the world that the current teams were greedy, elitist, and anti-American, though he might have used a few more words than that. Having received permission from the FIA to join the grid, the Andretti Autosport outfit now needs to be given the go-ahead by Liberty Media to join Formula 1's commercial agreement called the Concord Agreement before they're allowed to race. The problem for Mario and Michael is that the current 10 F1 teams are big stakeholders in Liberty Media. Without them, there is no product for Liberty Media to sell. So, by pissing off the current grid, the Andretti outfit put itself in Liberty Media's bad books. The consequence of that is that while they may have the FIA's approval, convincing the 10 teams and Liberty Media to let them race is going to be extremely difficult. The frostiness of FOM's statement upon Andretti's successful application to the FIA reflects that. We note the FIA's conclusions in relation to the first and second phases of their process and will now conduct our own assessment of the merits of the remaining application. Not exactly welcoming him with open arms, are they? Andretti are understandably not very happy about the lack of excitement from FOM about them joining. A big part of the problem is the commercial side of things. If Andretti joins the grid, the pot of money paid to the teams by Liberty Media each year will be split 11 ways instead of 10. That means every team will see a 10% drop in income from that channel, which will amount to tens of millions of dollars of lost money every year. So, not only have Andretti annoyed everyone who has a say in them joining, they're also asking for millions of dollars from each of them as well. To get their entry into the sport over the linebacker-sized block of Liberty Media and the current grid, Andretti Autosport have had to get smart. Their latest ploy to get into the sport has been pushing through their engine manufacturer as an official F1 engine supplier. The Detroit-based automotive manufacturing company General Motors have confirmed that it has formally registered with the FIA as a Formula 1 power unit manufacturer starting in the 2028 season. Andretti has already confirmed that General Motors are set to back their entry with a Cadillac-badged power unit. Part of the problem with the original Andretti bid was that it didn't bring an internationally recognized brand to the sport. Andretti might be big in US motorsport, but outside of the country, they aren't really recognized by the wider masses. Bringing the General Motors brand Cadillac on board solved that problem. The American firm has now announced it has formally registered with the FIA as a power unit manufacturer starting in 2028. We're thrilled that our new Andretti Cadillac F1 entry will be powered by a GM power unit said GM President Mark Royce. 
With our deep engineering and racing expertise, we're confident we'll develop a successful power unit for the series and position Andretti Cadillac as a true works team. We'll run with the very best at the highest levels, with passion and integrity that will help elevate the sport for race fans around the world. GM's development and testing of prototype technology is already underway. General Motors believes that engineering an F1 power unit will advance GM's expertise in areas including electrification, hybrid technology, sustainable fuels, high-efficiency internal combustion engines, advanced controls, and software systems. Michael is very obviously using the Cadillac engine as a way to force his way into the sport. Cadillac is a huge brand, and with their entry now accepted as an engine supplier, it's getting harder and harder for Formula 1 management and the teams to say they don't want them there. Turning Andretti away now also means telling Cadillac they aren't welcome either. Formula 1 has placed a half a billion dollar bet on growing in the US by funding the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Telling an American-based team with an American engine that they aren't welcome isn't going to endear the sport with new fans. Something worth noting is a lack of response from FOM on Cadillac's approval. When Ford announced they would be joining Red Bull powertrains to make engines from 2026 onwards, Stefano Domenicali, president and CEO of F1, said, The news today that Ford is coming to Formula 1 from 2026 is great for the sport, and we are excited to see them join the incredible automotive partners already in Formula 1. So far, he has nothing but stony silence for Cadillac. On the flip side, FIA president and Andretti cheerleader Mohamed Ben Salem was gushing with support for the brand. The presence of iconic American brands Andretti and GM is good for the sport, his tweet read. While McLaren and Williams may not have confirmed who they're buying their engines from for the new regulations yet, it isn't going to be Cadillac to begin with as they won't have anything ready until 2028, two years too late. Andretti will buy engines from someone until then, but the team is definitely going to be in partnership with Cadillac from 2028. Cadillac has only signed up as an engine manufacturer because of Andretti. So if you say no to Andretti, you leave Cadillac in the lurch as well. It's a bold move by the American coalition which won't endear them with FOM, but it is one less reason that Liberty Media can give for not wanting Andretti on the grid. One way or another, the team is set on forcing their way into the sport. Mario Andretti recently spoke about the team's entry into the sport and the lack of progress they're making with FOM. I can't understand that, Mario Andretti, the 1978 F1 world champion, who's now 83, said. I don't know whether it's wise to be happy with only 20 cars on the grid. If you look at the future and the increasing ambitions of Formula 1 given its popularity. The Italian-born American thinks the existing 10 teams are behaving very selfishly, which is nothing new. Mario Andretti points out that Andretti Cadillac is bringing a new manufacturer who's never been in Formula 1 with us, and that must be worth something. Everyone I speak to thinks the same way, so we're doing our best to check all the boxes. We're not looking for favors, we just want to do whatever is asked of us. The question now is whether Michael Andretti can negotiate through the current minefield with his father admitting F1 is obviously more political than IndyCar or Formula E. Each discipline has different goals and different rules, so it is difficult to compare, Mario said. But Formula 1 has not exactly given us a warm welcome so far. Do you think Formula 1 should be giving Andretti a warm welcome? And will getting Cadillac signed on as an engine manufacturer be enough to force their way in? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you want more F1 news and analysis like this, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, drive safe and bye for now.